Hey folks, today I'm going to share the way that I have Cura set up for getting such great prints and I'll share with you the most common settings that I typically play around with. I set up my Cura profile as an Ender 3 because in December of 2022 any cubic didn't have a great slicer and as you can see it's a this is a bed slinger it's got a Bowden tube on it. Okay so we're going to set up a printer right from scratch so I can come over here and I can click add a printer there's more than one way to get to this menu but that's the quickest way and so I'm gonna scroll down to Creality Ender 3 and I'm not gonna change the name right now add the printer adding the printer brings us to the machine settings and so we need to go and change the size of the bed because the Cobra Go and the Neo are both 220 so I'm just gonna change it the X and the Y to 220 the Z is 250 and basically the rectangular bed that's going to work it has a heated bed and it's marlin that we're using so you don't need to worry about the other settings the only other difference is and I'm just expanding this up so that you can see it is the start code I customized this start code and I'm just gonna cut and paste it in and then I'll walk you through the differences and why I did it so if you look to the right of the yellow cursor right now the m92 e108 is the calibration for the extruder on my cobra go on my cobra neo that value is different so i would create two profiles one for the go and one for the neo and i got the extrusion calibration right into the start code so every single model that i slice this is the calibration that it will use I already have a video on how to calibrate your extruder and I'll put the link in the description below. So the only other difference that I made to this start code is the M420 and I have videos on that as well. M420 S1 Z0 is turning on the bed leveling and turning fade functionality off. Every single slice will use the mesh that is stored on the EE prom of the printer. I did not modify the encode in any way, so I'm going to close this up. All right, so I've had a lot of people ask me about uh, settings, and it's not an easy question to answer. The thing is, is that it really depends upon what you're printing, you know. So if I was going to print this cube versus the thing hand, I'm going to be adjusting some settings in this column on the right here and there's some key ones that I typically mess around with and that's what I'm going to share with you today so let's have a look so the very first item that we're going to talk about is under the quality column here and it's the line width so I didn't know until recently when you're using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle that you can actually print a line width much larger than that so the example is when I was printing the blades for the lightsaber so for that project I ended up printing at a 0.9 millimeter line width and it came out fantastic the blades are really strong basically printed it in spiral mode uh, under cura or vase mode if you're using uh, Prusa custom settings that you can use down below here depending upon where you're printing but this is the only place that I've messed with it. The next item that I tend to look at is the wall line count. So right now it's defaulted to two. So if you change the thickness, the line width and the quality, just like I was mentioning a moment ago, then it's going to have an impact down here. Right now the wall thickness is set to 0.8 because we're using two wall line count of two. That's basically 0.4 times 2 to get a wall thickness of 0.8 so I've experimented and played around with printing these uh, calibration cubes with single walls that were 0.8 of a millimeter thick and it came out surprisingly well but it's something you can experiment with the thing hand I've only ever done it in two wall thicknesses using lightning infill and it comes out fantastic so that's an area that I that I play around with on the model and I'll slice it and analyze it drill down through the layers this may be slightly controversial but I like to print from the outside to the inside I have had the best results on both my Neo and my Cobra Go but it's something that you can experiment with and decide for yourself the next thing that I play around with is the Z alignment so uh, typically it's defaulted to user specified 
and I will slide the scale on the right and review the layers and look at where the Z seam is. I tend to like to keep it lined up as much as possible because if you go and end up making it random, it can end up looking horrible. It'll look spots all over your print. So I tend to stick with user specified. I will look at where it is and I may change the positioning here. So, and you just, you just slice it, you go, you have a look and you'll be able to decide if you like where it's at or not. Uh, I also tend to stick with the smart hiding. I have not really moved away from the smart hiding. I let it do its thing. Here's another area where I tend to play is in the top and bottom uh, layers. So top surface skin layers. I will tend to put a one there if I have a flat top and I'm trying to get a good finish on my flat top. The other thing is, is that when I want to get a good finish on the top of any print that's flat, I will come up here and I love this search bar and I'll type in monotonic. Basically it finds it for you and I'll turn it on. So I've got it defaulted on right now. You don't have to, like the, the thing hand on the left here, well there is no flat tops on it. But the cube, if I was printing it directly on the bed, it's going to have a flat top. And I would turn that monotonic on, I'll slice it, I'll look at the top layer looking for gaps and seams etc. Uh, when I have a flat top surface I'll put one here. I will look at the number of top and bottom layers and I evaluate based upon what is it that I'm printing. Is it uh, something that's artsy like the hand or is it something that I'm looking for structural integrity. I will basically change those numbers depending upon what it is that I want to print. And you can see here, I did the search before, but monotonic top bottom order, you see it's checked on. Okay, so the infill, well, I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Uh, you know, depending upon if you want something hollow, you're gonna put the infill density to zero, means there will be no infill. Uh, I tend to like to do lines. The default in this case is a grid, but I often find the grid is too coarse for supporting some of whatever it is that I might be printing at the time. So I tend to default out to lines and I'll use lightning in places like the thing hand on the left here. Uh, I do lines on the inside of the, uh, I do lines on the inside of the calibration cube and I've experimented occasionally here, but I tend to really stick to either lines or lightning. Otherwise, I leave the default settings here, and one day maybe I will experiment depending upon what it is that I'm trying to achieve. Now, in the material, I mean, the only place that I typically play in the material is I will play with the printing temperature and the bed temperature. I tend to stick to 50 degrees Celsius for my prints. It's worked very, very well for me. I know some people may uh, raise the temperature higher, but I hate it when I end up, it's too hot and you end up with this edge along the, uh, the print because it's melted it on a long print. I tend to stick to the defaults other than the printing temperature and the bed temperature. I tend to play with the dial that is on the control panel for speeding up my prints. And I'll, I, because I'm always periodically checking on my prints, sometimes I'll dial it up a little bit and I do it very slowly. Okay, so the other place that I uh, adjust depending upon which printer it is that I'm using is going to be enabling the retraction and changing the value that is here, this four millimeter. I now have the Neo and the Go so dialed in that basically for the Neo, I put four millimeters at 25 millimeters per second and on the go I put five millimeters at 25 millimeters per second. At one point I had different values but I, I tightened up and tuned both printers to the degree that these are now the fixed values. I actually went into the EE Prom on the Cobra Go and raised this uh, value on the EE Prom that would allow me to be able to go up to 50 millimeters per second but I have since discovered that I don't need to do that anymore. Cooling I never play with, support in here. I occasionally, occasionally use supports, not very often. I will tend to try to manipulate the positioning of my model 
on the bed to try to avoid supports at all costs. I print this thing hand, I never put supports on the outside of it, and of course the cube, I put, I don't put supports on the outside of that either, and I've been able to print lots of those and they come out fantastic. So not a place that I tend to really play around in often. So build plate adhesion. Now here is an area where I will tend to play a lot. And I use skirt on most items that will fix to the bed. I will watch the skirt line to know that I've got good adhesion before the main print begins. But in the case of this thing hand, I will come over here and I'll put a brim on it to make sure that it's going to be well adhered. And I'll put a fairly large one just because the fingers overhang a fair distance and I want to make sure this is a long print. I've printed a lot of these things. I do go into the special mode here and that is whenever I want to this spiralized outer contour is the equivalent of vase mode and I use this in order to be able to print the blades for that lightsaber. So the only thing I've played around with in the experimental has been the fuzzy skin. And honestly, I really like it. I think it's really, really cool. My wife wanted a snowman and I printed it with a fuzzy skin and it came out really, really sharp. The only thing that you gotta realize that anything that has a flat top layer on it, it'll put the fuzzy skin all around the perimeter, but it will not put the fuzzy skin on the top layer. And that's one thing that annoys me a little bit, but the snowman had a top hat on that was flat and it was really no big deal, so. Those are the key items that I tend to go in and look at and manipulate and analyze. And I will slice my model over and over again as many times as it takes before I put the print on the bed because I'd rather spend some time in front of the screen here than burn time on the print bed and filament and starting over and over and over again. Anyways, I really hope this helps. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'd be curious to hear. And uh, thanks for watching and happy printing.